The Sun is an object that flat earthers turn to time and time and time again. They get things wrong about the Sun, they misunderstand things about the Sun, and they even lie about the Sun. But why do they keep getting it wrong? It can only get better, right? Right? Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thanks to the sponsors of today's video, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientist in all of us. They have thousands of entertaining movies and TV shows on topics such as history, nature, science, food, technology, travel, and more. It really is smart TV for your smart TV, packed with award-winning exclusives and originals. Featuring 35 collections of curated programs, hand-picked by their experts, available for streaming on any device, anywhere, anytime. I've recently started watching the amazing series called Space Probes, which looks at the incredible journeys some of the probes we've sent to space have taken. You can look at what the Voyager probes have done, as well as other missions to Mars, Saturn, and Pluto. It really is incredible stuff. Just click on the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to get Curiosity Stream for just $14.99 for the entire year. Right, back to today's video where flat earther Karen B is gonna educate us all on equinoxes and how they are better, yes, better, when you use them on a flat earth. Dear, oh dear. Here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Karen B and I wanted to tell you all happy equinox. That's right, it's the equinox. It is, well, September 23rd. Let's just go over the equinox a little bit because a lot of people think that the equinox is a proof that the Earth is a globe, but actually, really, it's not. Well, when you're on an elliptical orbit of a star and you have a tilted axis, there'll be two times in a year when that tilted axis makes no difference at all, almost no difference at all, to the day length wherever you are on the globe. And it's actually pretty damning for flat Earth, to be honest. Not only is it not a proof of the globe, it actually works much simpler and much easier on a flat Earth than it does on a globe Earth. And I'm going to show that to you today. Ha, <laughs> good one. That's real good, Karen. Would love to see that. So what they say in Wikipedia, an equinox is commonly regarded as the instant of time when the plane, the extend, extended indefinitely in all directions of the Earth's equator, so the equatorial plane, of the Earth runs through the geometric center of the Sun's disk. Indeed, and as I said earlier there, the point in our uh, orbit where the tilt of the Earth doesn't affect the length of the day. So they're saying that the equatorial plane of the Earth and the equatorial plane of the Sun are perfectly aligned at the equinox. Incorrect. You see what I mean about misunderstandings? The Sun has an axial tilt of 7.5 degrees, and as we know, here on Earth, we've got an axial tilt of 23.5 degrees. Our equatorial planes will never match. The exact words of the article states that it is when the plane of the Earth's equator passes through the geometric center of the Sun's disk. The geometric center of the Sun's disk is here. That's got nothing to do with its equator. What it actually means is when the Earth's equatorial plane hits the Sun's geometric center. So for example, in the Northern Hemisphere winter, Earth's equatorial plane misses the sun. And in the northern hemisphere summer, it does too. However, this plane is in all directions, and twice a year, that plane lines up with the sun's geometric center beautifully. Right, now we've explained that, let's see what else Karen B has got wrong. This occurs twice each year around March 20th and the 23rd of September. Today is actually the 23rd, today. Yes, hey, look at that. In other words, it is the moment at which the center of the visible sun is directly above the equator. As I've just explained with some pretty awful hand-drawn pictures. Carry on. So, on a heliocentric model, if the sun is where they say it is, and it is directly lined up with the ball Earth, then exactly half of the ball Earth is lit up at one time, and it should give you about the same equal day and night across the whole half of the globe. But as you will see, that 
doesn't happen. Oh my days, please don't tell me you're gonna come at me with a matter of minutes, please don't. So, here we are. This is my area. I'm here in the southeastern United States here in North Carolina. And it's 11-11. Oh, look at that, 11-11. Oh, I love it, I love it. Okay, and <laughs> I see that all the time. Yes, and you actually see a lot of other times all the time, but you just don't remember those. And um, if you wanna find the equal day and night of your area, you go to time and date, and you put in your location, and you look, and it'll tell you that about the 23rd, they say, is the equinox, the equal day and night, except you look here where it says day length, and on the 23rd, it says the length of the day is 12 hours, 5 minutes, and 24 seconds. And it's been getting shorter as we've gotten closer to today's date. But look, tomorrow, the day is even closer to being equal day and night. It's 12 minutes and three, 12 hours and three minutes long, excuse me. Well, there are a couple of reasons for this. The equinox is the date that was suggested. And actually in 2020, the equinox was more like September the 22nd. And that's the exact moment that, as we've already talked about, the Earth's equatorial plane passes through the geometric center of the sun's disk. However, the time is slightly off for two reasons. Firstly, it's how we classify sunrise and sunset. Sunrise is when the leading edge of the sun first breaks above the eastern horizon. However, sunset is when the trailing edge of the sun finally dips below the western horizon. As the sun is a disk, this will of course cause a variation of a few minutes. Additionally, atmospheric refraction can actually extend those times even further. So that's the reason for it not being exactly 12 hours day and night on the date of the equinox. And then the 25th, look at this. 12 hours and 59 seconds is the closest to exactly half and half day and night in my area. Okay, that is not the 23rd, that's two days later. Three days, but it doesn't matter for reasons I've just explained. Okay, and get this. This will really blow your mind. This is uh, Queensland, Australia. Okay, Brisbane. This is the location I have selected for here. It's Brisbane, but that's fine. Okay, well, let's refresh. Let's make sure it's on the right day. Okay, over there it is 1.13 a.m. right now, but what we're looking at over here is when do they have their equal day and night? When does the day and night actually um, split equally half and half? And you'll see that they actually already had their equinox. Looks like on the 18th here, their day is almost exactly 12 hours. Oh, I wonder why it's earlier than the expected date this time. Wouldn't be because it's in the Southern Hemisphere by any chance, would it? Go look it up yourselves. The exact 12 hour day will be later than expected in the Northern Hemisphere and earlier than expected in the Southern Hemisphere. You keep pitching them, Karen, and I'll keep smashing them out the park, just like I did in the 1998 summer camp when all the bases were loaded. Look at that. And yet here, me, the closest I'm gonna get to an equal day and night is 12 hours and 59 seconds. So you can see it actually varies quite a bit from place to place. And so if they had, if Australia had their equal day and night on the 18th, right? And now I'm gonna have mine tomorrow on the 25th. Wow, that's a whole week. That's a week apart, okay? And, you know, if you look at the mainstream explanation of why this happens, they're going to tell you that it's not actually equal because of refraction and the planets slow down the Earth's orbit. Like here. Like do what now? What are you talking about here? Uh, what is it? Let's see what it says. So on the day of an equinox, daytime and nighttime are approximately, approximately equal duration all over the planet. They are not exactly equal, however, due to the angular size of the sun, atmospheric refraction, and the rapidly changing duration of the length of day that occurs at most latitudes around the equinoxes. So the angular size of the sun was the sunset sunrise difference I was talking about earlier. So here, it's gonna be rising on my equal day and night at 91 degrees and setting 
at 269. Okay. Let's check it here. The 18th. Rising for their equinox at 88 degrees and setting 271. But you're looking at their specific shortest days, not the exact equinox date. Okay, so it is off a little bit. And they want to tell you it's because of refraction and that the planets, you know, cause the Earth's orbit to speed up and slow down. Well, the Earth's orbital speed does change slightly as we go around the Sun. Kepler discovered that. And the Earth is not exactly in the exact same place in space or along in its orbit as it would have been on any given date the year before. It takes 365 and a quarter days to go around the Sun. It's why we have leap years. Love to hear the flat Earth explanation for that, by the way. So we do have to take this into account too. They'd like to tell you that the equinox is because the ball Earth and the Sun are exactly 90 degrees apart from each other, or the equatorial plane of the ball Earth is lined up with the Sun's geometric center, and that is why everybody is seeing the Sun rise at 90 degrees at the same time on the heliocentric model. All this stuff is backward engineered math, okay? You can't really prove or disprove that that is why the equinox happens, okay? The point of this video is that an equinox is entirely possible on a flat Earth and is much simpler to explain. I can't really imagine a simpler explanation, but please do try, Karen. Oh, wait, she's still incredulity ranting, hang on. Another thing to consider is, if this is really how the model re really, really is in real life, how come the North Pole is so much more habitable than the South Pole? How come it is so extremely cold in the southern part of the globe? Why? Why wouldn't it be the same? How come there is almost no flora and fauna? In fact, there is no natural flora and fauna living out down there in Antarctica. It is cold, it is desolate, it is harsh. Even the penguins don't want to live there all the time. In fact, I don't even know how they do it, but they're the only ones who do. The temperatures in, in the Arctic Circle are actually much more temperate and it is a much more livable area quite far north whereas Antarctica is almost uninhabitable. Yes, there is a reason for this. The Arctic ice sheet is sitting on water and the Antarctic ice sheet is sitting on land. It really is that simple. Now, on to your flat earth explanation for the equinox. Thank Rob Skiba for making this video, this graphic that so eloquently explains how the seasons happen on a flat earth and it is because the sun is on a circuit above the flat earth and it goes in between the tropics, the Tropic of Cancer, the equator, and then the Tropic of Capricorn and it does not go outside of these lines because that is the sun's set path. When the sun is over the equator, that is when the equinox happens, when it's close, passing over the equator. Okay, and the sun does travel from the Tropic of Cancer, which is north of the equator, to the Tropic of Capricorn, which is south of the equator. Total nonsense. And your explanation throws up more questions, the answers to which have never been given, and if they were, would be way more complex than the actual explanation that I've given. When the sun is over the equator, how does it know that it must throw its light different distances? What causes the dead straight line of illumination required for an equinox? What force is holding the sun up there? What force is driving the sun in its orbit above the earth? What force is moving the sun from the tropics through the equator to the other tropic? As you can see, Karen, your explanation is riddled with holes and throws up way more questions than it answers. Total, total nonsense. Well, there we go. What a lovely Flat Earth Friday that was. Really, really enjoyed it. Always love talking about the sun. It's definitely one of the Flat Earthers Achilles heels. Right, there we go. All done and dusted for another week. It really was one of my favourites, that one. I wonder what Karen B will think of that. Thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. I say it all the time, but we're pushing for that half a million subscribers. I want to get there by the end of this year. And if you really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. Uh, if you want to take advantage of getting Curiosity Stream for just $14.99 for the entire year, then click the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday for the Gematria Sports Guy response. It's going to be special. See you then.